Hey, David Bruce here with a three for all. This is three Brian Setzer licks from 1981, and I just finished the Stray Cats chord play, and I did give you a heads up at the end that I was going to put this together, and I just wanted to attack Brian Setzer and this rockabilly influence, you know, head on, because it's really inspiring, and you don't really hear a lot of people playing like this these days, you know, in the modern world, so I'm kind of hopeful that maybe this might inspire some people to dive a little deeper into 50s rock and rockabilly and some of these timeless, you know, influences. And speaking of influences, you know, I've had a lot of people ask about Brian Setzer and, you know, where did he get these licks and ideas and these tones and this direction and influence. And his influence came directly from the 50s. You know, people like Cliff Gallup, you know, Eddie Cochran and Carl Perkins and Scotty Moore and all these, you know, just essential legends of 50s rock and roll and rockabilly. So here's an image with some of Brian's biggest, you know, influences. So I think I said this about Steve Ray Vaughan and one of Steve Ray Vaughan's, you know, lessons on my channel. But I do consider Steve Ray Vaughan, you know, when he was alive, he was a walking encyclopedia of blues and blues guitar. You know, I mean, he had it all. He had Albert King's licks and he had B.B. King and some Freddie King and all these, you know, just essential great players mixed up. And he could, you know, whether it was turnarounds or licks or riffs or whatever, I mean, Stevie Ray definitely had just a command over blues. And with Brian Setzer... I feel he's kind of a walking encyclopedia of 50s guitar. You know, all these things that Cliff Gallup and, you know, Gene Vincent, you know, did together. And, of course, Eddie Cochran and that influence. But he really is. I mean, just kind of a walking encyclopedia. The sounds, the tones, the gear, the attitude, the hairstyle, of course, leather jackets or whatever. But you can definitely hear it. You can see it, you know, if you see some footage. But uh, you can definitely hear it in this plane. And he's consistently, you know, just served up that 50s guitar and 50s music, you know, kind of vibe the entire time he's been active, which has been technically since 1979, which is really cool. Right, the licks in this lesson came from a live performance in 1981, you know, with the Stray Cats, and I'm not really sure where it was located, but when they kept panning out in the crowd, you could tell, you know, the people in the crowd, there was a mix. They were just kind of regular, you know, seemingly regular uh, early 80s, you know, dressed people, and then right beside them were noticeably punks, you know, punk rockers. You could tell, like, the clothes and just everything was completely different. Hairstyles, you saw mohawks and stuff out in the crowd. So it was really interesting. It reminded me of seeing, like, early footage of the police, you know, with Sting and Andy Summers and Stuart Copeland, but early live footage with the police. You could see the crowd, and you could see this early 80s, you know, kind of image. But then you could also see punk, you know, punk rockers out in the crowd, too. So definitely Stray Cats, you know, appealed to the rock fans, but they also appealed to the punk fans. And you could see it in some of this, you know, concert footage. The first flick takes place during the solo from Rumble in Brighton. Something like this. <laughs> starting on E minor pentatonic right there and you're gonna grab this G note and kind of smear bend it and grab E D to B and you're gonna do that twice in a row like this it's kind of a quick little lick and then right there you're gonna to move to open position and you're doing this flat five kind of blues lick so you're grabbing the open A B flat and then pull off to the open A and then grab G right there on the low E string down this open string kind of pull-off lick. It's technically a Les Paul lick, a classic, you know, Les Paul pull-off lick, like this. So you're literally walking, you know, third fret, second fret open string all the way down. And it's totally just kind of a made-up, like, hybrid scale, but it works, and definitely Les Paul did that all the time. time here. The next lick takes place during the first solo in Stray Cat Strut. It's really cool, like this. I mean, 
it's just, it's beautiful. But uh, we're starting here in Stray Cat Struts in C minor, and we did look at that in the Stray Cat's uh, chord play episode I just put together. But we're starting here. <laughs> you just think of C minor pentatonic right there. And then you're gonna shift this B flat down to A flat. He's kind of moving from you know A flat and B flat, and he introduces that G note right there, um, which is matching the chord progression. Because if you uh, remember from the chord play episode, you know, we got C minor, B flat, A flat, and then it moves to G right there, G7. And so he's timed that perfectly to introduce that G note right when it went to the G chord, like this. hear this. So he's grabbing B right there, which is matching, you know, G, but then he's sliding back into C minor. So that's kind of flirting with C harmonic minor, technically. You know, if you really think of what you're playing, you know, when you're playing it. So tasteful. So right there, you're kind of walking around C minor, you know, after you do that slide from B. And then slide this G to A flat. So you're kind of flirting with a, an A6, technically. Or an A flat 6, rather. You're kind of flirting with that ever so slightly. playing that chord, but he's kind of, you know, alluding to it. Really cool. So one more time with this lick. So cool. The next lick's the next lick from that solo, like this. So he's literally bashing his way down there, C minor, B flat 6, A flat 6. There's that A flat 6 that we were hinting with, but now we're actually playing it. And then that's going to morph into G7. Almost like a little magic trick right there. You know, A flat 6 keeping everything, well you're keeping the pinky on the same fret and then moving everything else down a fret. So that's really interesting too. So that, once again, C minor, B flat 6, A flat 6, the G7. And then you hear this really cool lick. So he's doing these really quick slides in there, which is so cool. So right there, grab C, slide D to E flat, and then grab that G flat right there. And then you're going to slide this G flat to G, and then catch C on the G string right there. And then right there, you're going to slide this uh, D to E flat. And then that's when you catch uh, this F sharp, you're going to bend that up. I guess you could also think of that as G flat. You're going to bend that G flat up, catch this uh, C note there, grab D, kind of do a slight bend on that D and end on C. So one more time really slow with that lick. So it's all about the phrasing and timing for that lick, but it's really cool. And it's deceptively hard to play because you're doing these really quick shifts and slides, you know, all the way through it. So one more time with this lick. And here's a bonus lick from this live footage, and it's technically the end of the second solo in Stray Cat Strut, but I love this part, like this. One more time. So right 
they were literally grabbing, you know, this kind of C minor triad. <laughs> kind of aggressively strumming it and then he also just kind of smears the bar with that uh, that kind of ringing triad Ooh, I love that where it sounds like a pedal steel or something almost but it's on guitar and you're kind of raking into these two little double stops right there which is really cool like C Dorian. unusual because you're kind of playing lead with like you know partial chords and these double stops and then I like this kind of Dorian kind of flirting with that Dorian tonality one more time there gonna wrap this episode of three for all with three brian setzer licks from 1981 and brian's just a very you know unique and special guitarist and like i mentioned earlier like steve ray vaughn was a very authentic you know blues musician he served it up authentically the entire time his entire career his entire life and brian setzer's done the same thing with 50s you know rockabilly and rock and roll he's been very authentic from the gretsch guitars and the tones you know that he dials up his clothes his image the lyrics, you know, in a lot of these songs about hot rods and women and stuff like that, you know, it's very, very authentic. You know, it's almost like it, it just came out of a time machine from the 50s. But, you know, a lot of this music's new or at least, you know, relatively recent. And I really respect Brian. He's got a huge, chord, you know, chord vocabulary. He's got this, you know, massive vocabulary of licks and riffs and fills and all this stuff, you know, that's very authentic. And I just think it's cool, you know, it's just so unique and different. And you don't really hear a lot of people, you know, playing this way these days. So I think it's just, you know, really special and interesting. And it's been fun, you know, putting these lessons together. So anyway, leave some feedback and comments. Please subscribe to the lessons. And I'll be back before you know with more content material. Thank you.